Ready for a move and you can't decide, should I buy a condo or perhaps a single family home? Well, today's video is for you because I'm gonna talk about what it's like to buy a condo in Florida. So regardless if this is your first move, whether you're relocating to a new area or you're just purchasing a second home, the question always comes up, is a condo a good choice? So let's dive into some of the pros and cons. First though, I'm Lisa McBride with Sarasota Neighborhood Experts. Now my team and I love Love helping so many people buy, sell, and invest in real estate here in Florida. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell as you'll be notified when I post new videos. Now you don't want to miss anything. So let's dive right into the difference between buying a condo that you won't see in a single family home. Now when most people think of condos, they think of the multi-story buildings with apartment-like units that they purchase, own, live in, and they maintain this unit as their home, which is pretty accurate. But condos can can come in single story units, two story units, three story units, or 19 story units. What is common in our area is two to four stories complexes normally, but if you're closer to downtown or the beaches, of course we have larger buildings with multiple stories. Now when you purchase a condo, some of the benefits is that you're only responsible for the interior of your unit. So although you will need to insure your unit and your contents, you're not responsible for insuring the building, paying for let's say a term termite inspection or having it treated for termites. You don't have to worry so much about putting a brand new roof on or painting the exterior. And all of those things that a homeowner of a single family home knows that they may have to do in the future, you don't have to think about that in a condo, right? But to not have to worry about any of these items, you're gonna be paying into an HOA. HOAs maintain the building, the entrance, the lobby, the grounds, and all of the amenities. This sounds great, right? You get to use all of these things without having to maintain them. And and many, many people love condos for the ease and turnkey lifestyle that it affords them. However, keep in mind, those HOA fees can get pricey. A typical HOA fee in a condo will vary depending on the number of units paying into the complex, the age of the complex, and the amenities that are needing to be maintained. For instance, if it's a small complex of only, let's say 10 units, of course, it's gonna cost a little bit more to maintain everything than if you have a building that has 110 units all paying into these fees. Now these fees can be as low as $300 a month or as high as $1,400 a month. So it really depends on a lot of things. And there's two big things to keep in mind with condos and condo fees. Condo fees will most likely go up every year. And also, if the building is in need of major renovations, such as new roofs or things that need to be repaired, and there's not enough money already collected in reserves, and a special assessment can be imposed to all homeowners in the building. Now, sometimes this can be a one-time fee that only occurs very randomly every 10 years or so, or I've seen it as much as $60,000 that all homeowners had to pay into to install all new windows. And this is extremely important thing to note because after the tragic condo collapse in Surfside, Florida, Florida State Legislature took swift action to implement inspection reform to hopefully ensure that this never happens again. So Florida passed several laws to keep buildings safer and there's very specific inspections that need to be done and timely. These new Florida condo laws mean significant changes for building owners all across Florida. Structural inspections are now mandatory for condos and cooperative buildings that are three stories high or greater. All buildings will have to have a milestone inspection performed when a building is 30 years old and then every 10 years after the initial inspection. Now, if your building is within three miles of the coastline, a milestone inspection will have to be performed every 25 years and then every 10 years after that initial inspection. The purpose is to verify the safety and adequacy of the structural components of the building. And there's two phases to this. So phase one, you go through and make sure that everything is in good working order. Now, if you have problems, you go to phase two. And so phase one is definitely the phase you want to get done immediately in case there's things that have to be taken care of. Now, keep in mind, this is going to come with a cost for every building, every unit, because these inspections are not free. The state is not paying for you to have these inspections done. And then if there's deficiencies in the building, then naturally repairs are going to need to be made and the homeowners are going to be responsible. So the deadline for having 
these inspections, this milestone inspection, is December 31st, 2024. So in the next two years, if the building has not already been inspected, which a lot of them have already, there's a lot of buildings that were very proactive in getting this inspection done. However, in the next two years, we are going to see all of the buildings have this inspection. Now keep in mind, there was a lot of condos built in the 70s and 80s here in Florida. And so it's just natural that there's going to be some improvements needed. Also in Florida, flood insurance, which is covered by the building and the building insurance is covered again by the HOA. And those costs are rising greatly, specifically due to the devastating hurricanes here in Florida in 2022. So condo boards throughout Florida are having no other option but to raise HOA monthly fees to cover all these large cost increases, which naturally means that the homeowner is going to take on those costs. Along with the cost of these inspections, improvements, and insurance, we now also have to have a fully funded reserves. And the reserves are there to pay for repairs that are needed in the future. To actually have a fully funded reserve, the expectation is to have at least 10% of the operating budget in reserves at all times. So if it's not currently set there, they may impose a special assessment to get it to that. And this number becomes even more critical to home buyers if you're financing a purchase in a condo. A lot of lenders will require 70% down on a condo unit if the complex is not fully funded. So it's incredibly important to get a copy of the budget and finances as quickly as possible. Now remember, each building will have its own covenants, rules and restrictions, and approval process. And a few rules and restrictions that are typical in condos that you need to keep in mind? Well, leasing terms, such as how often can you rent the unit out? How long can you rent the unit out? For instance, it may say you can rent your unit out twice a year, but for no more than 30 days. So rental restrictions are very strict in condo buildings. Another restriction is pets. So some buildings will say you can have one pet or two pets, but they're very limited in size. So be sure to get a copy of those restrictions. A few other things to keep in mind, you may be restricted as far as parking, guests, loud music, grills on the patios, and many, many other things. Another thing to keep in mind, the cost to renovate typically tends to be a bit higher simply as access to the units are a little bit more limited. You can only allow workers in your unit certain times of the day. They have to use elevators. It takes more time and effort to transport supplies up to your unit. So naturally the cost to renovate is just a little bit higher. Another key point that you should know before buying a condo Although condo buildings tend to be a little bit less expensive than a single family home, and you may believe, oh, it's gonna be a little easier to qualify, let's say, for a $350,000 condo as opposed to a single family home, that's not necessarily the case. Because keep in mind, the HOA fee is factored into your monthly payment and it is factored into that debt to income ratio. So if your condo has a $450 a month condo fee, it may even be easier to qualify for a $450,000 single family home with a little or no HOA fees. Okay, I shared a lot of information about owning a condo and perhaps it may sound like I think it's a bad idea. However, that is not the case at all. I just wanted to give you as much information about owning a condo as possible. Personally, I think condo is a terrific way to own a home. So many of us, whether you're just getting started with your first home or you're downsizing, can really benefit from owning a condo. For first time buyers that may be accustomed to living in an apartment, buying a condo to get started in home ownership is a great great option. Again, many times, specifically in smaller complexes, you have everything taken care of for you, such as your exterior and maintenance and landscaping. You can do a lot with interior space. You can build equity and not have to worry about immediate big ticket repair items. Now we have a number of townhomes and condo buildings that I think make great homes for people and a lot of new ones. Also, if you're looking to downsize or own a second home, again, I love condos for this reason. We want the freedom to come and go without worrying about our homes. When you own a single family home and you perhaps are gonna be away for long stretches of time, you still have to plan ahead to have someone do your yard work or check on the house. There's just so many things that can go wrong if you're gone for more than a week or two at a time and a lot to worry about. So a condo is a great way to be gone and not worry so much. Now there's definitely pros and cons of owning a condo, but don't let any of the items listed above scare you away. I think condos are a great investment. They're popping up everywhere and there's lots of reasons why people like them and the lifestyle is amazing. Lots of amenities. It's a great way to meet neighbors and really feel connected to an area that you live. Now, if you'd like more information on condo buildings or just buying or selling here in Sarasota, 
at any time, give me a call. My team and I are always here to help. Now we really appreciate you watching and until next time, take care.